Good afternoon everybody, this is Farron here and greetings to the plastic population. Um, thought I'd do a review on a model kit that I just got through the post today from Masterbox and uh, it is, as you see it on the front here, um, forgive my German, I'm not even going to pronounce, even try to pronounce that, but it's German motorcycling troops on the move. Uh, with this kit you get four figures, basically you get the uh, women's summer uniform and winter uniform and one R75 and sidecar motorcycle and it comes with photo etch parts as well and um, I've already had a good look at the model and it got to be fair it is very nice I have to be it is a very nice model indeed um, on the rear you have the sprue map only of the figures and then over here you have your color call outs you have Vallejo, Tamiya, Life Color, Humbrol and Agama never heard of them Okay, so there's all your colour callouts all along there. Um, three of those apply to me. That's the uh, Life Colour, Tamiya, and Vallejo. Um, there's foot wedge parts, obviously for the spokes and the base for the motorbike. Um, I'll give it a go, <laughs> see how it goes. Really, I've had look at them; they are extremely fragile. When I got big bloody pork sausages as fingers, but anyway, that's the box art and. Um, you just got like your health and safety bits on the side there, box out on the side, and then what other kits are available, and that as well. I mean, initially I was going to go for this because I just want this for a diorama, but um, I thought for a couple of quid more, because um, that kit alone cost, um, I saw on eBay for £15.50, I picked this up for £17.99 and then you get a load more bits to it. So. I'll show you that in a moment when I uh, go through the sprues. <coughs> Excuse me. So first off, we have all the different variants that we can do on here. So basically we've got um, Normandy, Libya, Anzio, um, Autumn 42, and then we've got a bonus here for Autumn 42 again. Uh, in Panzer Grey, um, like I said, I'm not even going to bother to <laughs> pronounce any of these. But basically, got Folsom Jaeger, I can pronounce that. Africa Corps, other Panzer Division, Stalingrad, all sorts there. So you got one, two, three, four, five, five, six variants to actually choose from. And then we have a sprue map there, which is very clear. Because the thing with Masterbox, they don't actually number their parts on their sprues, so you do need to keep this at hand at all times anyway. But here we go. Uh, there's not many um, stages to this model, but as you can see, it is very complex. No, so three parts to each wheel, and then we've got our engine block, and then we've got a draw, drill, tiny little holes into the engine block to allow for the frame to actually fit onto it. Now I've looked at this drill bit for this hole and it is minute. I mean you're looking at like point, point 0.1 of a drill bit. It's so tiny. And then over here we've got, as we keep moving along, we've got step 5, it's all in Roman numerals. So step 6, step 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15, 16, 17, 18, there's about 19. 18 steps all together so all these parts I'm going to show you now but uh, I've built one of these before they are very tricky they are very fiddly the parts are extremely fragile and uh, you really it's one of these kits you really have to take your time on but anyway I digress let's um, get on with the parts first one we're gonna have a look at is the uh, motorbike So there we go. So if I bring this up closer, you can see that fine, brilliant. Yeah, quite a bit of flash on the parts, but I mean that's all part of the fun of the hobby is to clear up all that flash, clean up all your parts to make a realistic replica of the model from the Second World War. So we've got a really nice uh, detail on the engine there of the R75. So you can see that's really nice, fairly crisp as well. 
There is um, a little bit of texturing on the uh, sidecar seat. Um, yeah, there's more small parts, the saddles, front and back of the bike. Got a couple of uh, MGs, two different variants, maybe one's a 34 and the other one's a 36. Not too sure on that. Um, the actual sidecar, which is quite nice actually. Can't see it. There's a little bit of um, flash on the inside there, on these parts here. But that's nothing to cry about. I mean, that's an easy clean. All, all of it's actually an easy clean. You just need a very sharp, brand new scalpel blade, and that will clean up tidy. I wouldn't dare hit it with a piece of sandpaper because it would just snap off. Yeah, there's some uh, lovely parts here. You got um, the little panniers there look to go on the rear of the motorbike basically they're just little satchels that hold documents in and what have you um, you've got your nice looking mud guards there's no flash I can see but oh yeah just a little bit on there just a tiny tiny bit but yeah it's all looking good uh, very nice um, muffler on the exhaust again lots of tiny little parts on here so we can expect quite a few swear words and a lot of parts being devoured by the carpet monster um, there's the tank the fuel tank there we go that's pretty cool some nice details on the side there and let you even get the uh, number plate as a uh, separate part. Generally, you see this on the Tamiya kits, and they're sort of like um, you know pre-molded to the part. But uh, we shall see. Now onto the figure sprue. Oh no! What, what do I do? The photo etch first. Now this. Photo which is made by Aba for Masterbox. And as you can see, we've got some very, very delicate parts there. I'm I'm in an R in shall I or shan't I? Um, leave a comment below if I should use the uh, photo etch spokes or not. Because uh, to be honest with you, and I will be honest with you, it looks very intimidating for me. I mean, I can't. I will, I know I will mess it up. I really do. So. I might just keep that in my spares box and if anybody wants any of these send me a message through Facebook or in the comments section below and, um, and if you're in the UK I'll post it out to you and there's the uh, decals um, actually they feel really nice it's, they're not chunky at all it looks like this has been cut from a bigger sheet and put in with the kit because it's not a finished piece of paper, you can tell it's been cut by by some scissors there. But um, all in all, it looks fairly neat. They're not glossy, which is a bonus. So yeah, that's it. That is the uh, German sidecar with four figures, two of which uh, I'm going to show you now. Okay, here are the figures. Um, I've got to suss out which side is which. Right, okay, this side here are uh, figures in summer uniform or spring or whatever. And um, I always look at the faces before anything else. Try to get that to focus up a bit better. There we go. So there you go, there's a, there's some nice details there on the torso and that bit of stowage at the back um, the water can, gas mask legs and arms a bit more stowage and another water bottle there and then opposite we've got I can't really get this any closer, hang on go upside down instead so there we go, there are parts of the cloak oh, there's winter coat I'm on a different figure now sorry um, but um, if you have a look along here there's a minute 
I'm not sure if you can, but Karen can pick it up, but there's not much flash, but there's a minute film going around the edges, but that could just be standard to what comes out of the moulds. But um, I've built many Master Box figures, and they do go together really well. Um, a nasty chunk of um, flash on this one here, which isn't too bad. Uh, again, sharp knife, clean it up, and the parts will go together. I mean, any model, as long as you clean up every part, it will go together, and you should not have any problems. The um, You've also got a little gas mask here. Um, this gas mask, you can actually attach it to the headlight of the motorbike as a bit of um, soldier humor I guess and we've got some really nice little add-ons here like these um, stick grenades attached to a looks like a bundle of canvas I don't know what type of helmet you call that but it's like a German helmet with um, a canvas wrapped around it which is very nice your bread bag and then you've got your gas mask water bottle ammunition pouches for your rifle and then over here we've got more parts for the actual long coats or great coats. Um, another pouch there is that might be a map pouch by the looks of it, and then same as the other side, the rifle ammunition. And then we this is obviously the uh, this is the uh, rider of the bike there and there. Again, we've got some great details. The head's pretty good. No, it's not too bad. As a kit, I'm going to love it because I love painting figures and I've really got back into my World War II stuff. Um, as far as um, Warhammer and everything that goes, um, I'm banging it on the edge because the price for what you get in these days is just, it's just too much. Um, you know, 20 quid for a little figure about an inch and a half tall and, you know, it's just, eh, eh. no, can't do it no more. So, what I've got left in my cabinet, well, my, in my stash will be built eventually, as and when I might give them to my kids, but hey, we'll see how it goes. But um, this video isn't finished yet, okay, this, I've, uh, I, I might as well do a, an update on what I've been actually, um, you know, building. Um, last weekend I received this through the post, uh, the Tamiya Kit and Crad, built up really nicely, as you'd expect from a Tamiya Kit. Uh, so I primed it and pre-shaded it all over. Put loads of bits, odds and sods, rifles, Panzerfaust, an MP, MG on the top there. Uh, some war some cans, uh, radio, ammunition for the ru for the machine gun. Yeah, it just went together really well. Um, the figures that came with it were appalling. I'm not surprised. The kits from the 1970s. So um, I kind of cannibalized. Um, this figure, which I'm going to sh I'm going to put some stills up of this figure at the end of the video, just so you know I'm not telling any porky pies. Um, the actual torso is from the uh, Nashorn figure set, and the arms and the legs are from the actual Kettenkrad kit. But um, where this guy was wearing a winter smock, I actually had to use green stuff to actually build up the arms and around the thighs can't really see it because it's black because I've primed it and at the back here but the uh, stills I'll if I can get them from my phone onto my computer I'll show you and then you'll see where I've done the work uh, painting wise I've finished a couple of the uh, 350 second Vox Grenadier there we go <laughs> this double is actually showing a lot more um, prominent on the camera than it is from my view but uh, I'm very happy the way it turned out so like I said these are just like a load of test figures for me to get back into the swing of it this figure turned out a lot better on the face so yeah that's those um, and I got one of the um, Fulsham Jaeger done And again, uh, he's in a um, splinter camo and uh, a very nice model in, as well. So let's just put that down there for now. And then 
this is a WIP sorry about the light it's the best I can do today I've already done a test run if I put my lamp on it's too bright and if I turn it off it's too dark I just can't win but uh, that's where I am with that um, what else have we been doing that's pretty much it really because um, I've had days where I don't want to do it and then there's days I want to do it the whole week that is and um, but um, the past few days I've had my mojo's been up on a high so I've been doing a lot of painting like as you can see with the 350 second figures uh, they, they turn out really well um, for the uh, detail on the um, helmet there I am uh, basically just used um, it was field field grey from Vallejo and then hairspray over the top of it and then uh, German white tank uniform uh, that one there we go and because uh, it's not a, a bright white it's not a pure white it's an off white and it works rather well so I just took a small toothbrush to it and um, there you have it I just got plenty of chipping on there I want to look heavy chipping because we're just like going into water now and there's no snow around so he's trying to pick at it whenever they're having a bit of free time but um, the actual figure itself is a nice figure to build so much going on with this figure and Dragon actually make a, a 1 16th version of this as well I've got it in my cupboard somewhere in bits which is damn shame really I'm not sure if I can actually um, restore it because I've got so many parts missing but anyway never mind but yeah, that's what I've been up to. And the review of the kit, um, I'll give my thoughts on it when it's actually built. And just to tell you if it is an easy build or if it's a hard build, if it's for the beginner or if it's for the more experienced modeler, which going by the parts of it, I say it is nowhere near for the beginner because it's a very complex kit. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, oh yeah, one other thing, new acquisitions was just um, that model kit and uh, this paint set by Vallejo um, I've already been using it as you expect from Vallejo very nice set 8 colours, £16 and two pence, and I have purchased that from s and Stuff in the UK uh, they've got a great website this is where I feed my addiction for my paint that's where I get all my paints from is from them good prices too but anyway there you go, that's it Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one. Please leave your comments below and if anybody's interested in that piece of photo etch, let me know. Okay, thanks very much. Bye for now.